Testing, testing, one, two, Ichi Nisanchi, Go Roku City, Achi Kyuju, hello guys, and welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses to the metaverse and virtual reality, of course, and everything that goes with it. Today, very exciting video, because wait, we're here to talk about the Pico Neo 3 Link, of course, they just unveiled by Dance VR and Pico Interactive just unveiled a brand new website very recently, a couple days ago also. So is everything that they're showing you and everything that they're telling you under the hood to be true or is it too good to be true? Mm, we're going to find out. I'm going to show you some footage inside of the headset with the graphics and everything else that goes with it and reveal some of the things that I feel mm, perhaps they are not telling you. Who knows? All right. But first, guys, do remember that you can enter to win a brand new new HP Reverb G2 sponsored by HP. We will unveil the winners upon hitting the 11,000 subscribers, guys. Another lucky devil will be able to win also a brand new pair of cyber shoes with the cyber gaming station, the chair, the carpet, everything that goes with it also sponsored by cyber shoes. So they'll be the ones to send it to you. And a third winner will walk away with a voucher worth 50 US dollars that you'll be able to redeem against any VR title that you want either on the Oculus MetaQuest store, Viveport, or the Steam VR store, because basically I'll give you some cash and you can splash the cash on whatever you want. So that is what will be happening. So do go to the link description below after this video to enter to wins completely free. And as I mentioned before, the faster we get to 11,000, the faster we'll be able to do the giveaway. So it's all up to you. All right, guys, so let's switch back to today's topic about the Pico Neo 3 link. The website, is it too good to be true? Is everything that they're telling you on the marketing as what it's supposed to be. Well, let's find out. Let's just transition over very quickly. Let's go to the uh, Twitter. Now, by the way, guys, you can follow us on Twitter. We are VR Essentials One, if you can see it down there. So VR Essentials and then the numerical one, guys. So do follow us on Twitter as we post a lot of things. And thank you so much. We're almost at 700 followers. That is amazing. Pico very recently wrote new website alert. Now you can find all things Pico under our new site, Pico XR. You can experience everything we have to offer, content services and products alike. Hmm, I like this. All right, let's go to the website very quickly. Boom, here we go. So as you can see, they're featuring the Pico Neo 3 link here. Does it look as good as the real thing? Well, let's put the picture. You can see the picture there. And then now let's transition over to the actual product, which is here. Transition, boom, there we go. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty similar. First of all, in terms of the actual, let me just go back. There we go. Until the actual product itself. So there you go. That's the product. Let me transition once more. There we go. Looks pretty similar. Now the sticker on the front, of course, is because this is for my ultra leap. It's double sided tape. And also there's the protective layer here that is still here because I don't want my Pico to scratch. So I left it on. But of course, uh, you can take it off later on. That's not an issue. Let's go through the website and just see uh, what else. So flagship two in one headset, all in one 4K lossless picture quality and Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 processor for standalone and PC VR use. Now, for those who are new to VR and who are not quite sure what the Pico is, basically it's exactly the same. It's the first, the world's first competitor to Meta's uh, uh, Meta's uh, Quest 2 headset, it enables you to go inside a virtual reality without any cables of any kind. You can put this on your head and basically go and play. There are tons of apps inside. We'll go through this in just a moment. I also did another video. If you want to know exactly what apps are inside, go and check out that other video. I'll put a link in the description below as well. And you can also hook it up with a cable or wirelessly to your PC. And we'll talk about this in just a moment. However, do make sure you enable your bell after you subscribe as I will be uploading other videos very soon in the future, in the near future, you know, about the graphics, what it looks like when you stream wirelessly to your PC with all the Steam VR games and all this stuff versus the actual 4K DP. It's called the DP 4K um, cable, which provides you 4K uh, rendering uh, quality inside of the headset. All right, let's just transition over once more. Um, okay, so you can see here a nice little picture. Now, I'm not quite sure what this is. 
Uh, perhaps this is a very flat PC. I'm not quite sure. Maybe I need to spruce up my knowledge in technology. Ooh, maybe I'm a bit behind. Who knows? Leave a comment below if you guys know what this is. A PC VR quality secured. And we're going to talk about this in just a moment. Obviously, there's a big market of people who are in PC. I would like to state, however, that for those who want to buy the HP Reverb G2, you will need a more powerful graphics card versus the PC, uh, the, 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 the Pico Neo 3 Link, sorry, you only need a GTX 1060. I think for the HP Reverb G2, you need a GTX 1070 or 1080. Go to the website to double check. Sorry, I didn't write it down and I just forgot. Uh, but anyway, what you will need is all written here. Desktop standard DP 1.4 and above port. USB 2.0, not 3.0, by the way. A notebook mini DP 1.4 or above port 1. USB 2.0 or above port 1. Processor Intel Core i5-4590 and AMD Ryzen 1500 or higher. Graphics NVIDIA, NVIDIA sorry, GeForce GTX 1060 and AMD Radeon RX 480 or higher. So this is for those who want to experience PC VR with the actual DP4K cable, uh, which, you know, I will superimpose some images as we're basically talking. Um, and you also need RAM 8 gigabytes or more and OS Windows 10 or above. So that's for that. Now, in terms of the actual games that are available inside of the headset itself, that means this is not the games um, you know, these, these are not the games from PC that are compatible with it. I'm talking about the actual games inside of the actual PC, uh, Pico Neo 3 Link. Sorry, uh, let me just transition over. So some of the games that they're basically, uh, you know, promoting here, some of the games are very famous, very well known in VR. These are very hot blockbuster games. They will give you a really cool um, VR experience, both for hardcore fans, but also for beginners, for those who are not used to actual uh, VR itself, because for those who are not used to it, you may get a little bit of motion sickness or something like that. So it's important to play some easy games first and then, you know, get more hardcore into it. And I will show you some footage inside graphics in just a moment. So do hang around with me and do make sure you enable the bell after you subscribe, as I just mentioned earlier, as I'll be uploading more graphics in game and reviews and all this kind of stuff about the Pico Neo 3 Link. All right, so let's just transition over again and continue. Walkabout mini golf, yes, it is inside. Red Matter is inside. Contractors is inside. Contractors, very, very awesome gay game, sorry. Much better, I think, than Population 1 in many respects. Red Matter is a very cool game. Walkabout, mini golf, extremely amazing game. Dash Dash, it's an okay game, but it's good to have. 11 Assassins, not too bad. World of Warplanes, it's okay. 11 Table Tennis, a smashing game, definitely a must play. Hyper Dash, super awesome game. Synth Riders, very, very cool game. Zero Caliber, new maps, yes, definitely a must try. A Fisherman's Tale is amazing, must try this game. Arizona Sunshine, a classic game. And of course, there's more games inside of the actual VR headset. As I mentioned, do go and check out the other... Uh what, look here, okay. I uh, do actually do go and check out the previous video where I go through every single game one by one. This video was released about a month or so ago, so very recent. Uh, and there aren't that many new titles since then, so definitely go and, and check out that video to know what else is inside. Now, let's talk about the things that they don't tell you. First of all, perhaps we can talk about tracking. Well, the tracking technology that they use inside of here is basically infrared technology. And it is absolutely amazing, guys. It's better than the marketing is gonna be able to tell you because you, you'll see, I mean, I'm gonna superimpose some images as I'm talking, but when you, when you put the headset, let's just say it's on my head right now, and you put the, the controller next to it, or you put it above it, or you put it a little bit behind, or on the other side, the tracking is still there. So you can just imagine if it was on your head like this and you had your controller on top of your headset. I'm not just talking about like a little bit on top. I'm talking fully on top of your headset or fully on the side of your headset. It keeps the tracking. The tracking is absolutely amazing. I have to say that there is no issues whatsoever. I have not tested the Pico at nighttime, however, or with an IR illuminator, an, uh, basically an infrared illuminator. I have not tested it with that, but I can tell you that in low light, it works absolutely 
absolutely great. It's absolutely amazing. As you can tell here by the footage that I shot with my iPhone, it is absolutely, absolutely amazing. So I have to say that the tracking is just brilliant. They've done an amazing job. Honestly, really, really awesome job there. The other thing I can talk about, if we go back to the website very quickly, uh, is we go here, great comfort. Now let's talk about the comfort. Now the comfort, it is true that, you know, in a way, uh, let me just transition over again. Okay, here we go. Transition, okay. So let's talk about this part of the headset, which is basically the padding at the back. Now the padding at the back, because it separated the battery at the back with the main stuff processor at the front, I have to say that the ergonomics, once it's on your actual head, yeah, it feels very comfortable, um, much more comfortable than my Quest 1. I don't have the Quest 1 anymore, of course. Since Meta changed all the policies, uh, we got rid of all our Quest Quests. So I'm not interested. We don't have Quests here at all. And we're not going to purchase any more Quests in the future uh, until they change the strategy, that is. And they're not, you know, they don't have so much bad publicity. But in terms of um, Pico's ByteDance, Pico Interactive's um, Pico Neo 3 uh, link. Now, of course, this is a Pico Neo 3 Pro, but it's exactly the same as Pico Neo 3 Link. By the way, guys, the only difference that will happen is, um, okay, I don't have the packaging here. It's in, in my cupboard, but you will basically see Pico Neo 3 Link on your packaging. Basically, apparently, that's the only major difference. Um, there's no major differences inside of the actual headset. I have sent an amazing, huge email to ByteDance Pico Interactive, however, I've never got a reply on any of those questions. So I'm just going to say, as far as I'm concerned, it's exactly the same as the Pico Neo 3 Pro for the Pico Neo 3 Link. Uh, perhaps there might be some changes inside of the software, maybe in your home, I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, no changes to the processor, no changes to the lens quality, no changes to anything except for that. Uh, okay, you it will be different to the Pico Neo 3 Pro i, which means you will not have the Toby eye tracking inside, but I also do not have the eye tracking inside of this headset because it is not the Pico Neo 3 i. This is the Pico Neo 3 Pro, which as I mentioned, is the same as the Pico Neo 3 Link. So I have to say that in terms of the mousse here, this is what's gonna disturb me. If I just transition over this part here of the headset, this part here, as you can see, it looks exactly the same on the Pico Neo 3 Link. Here looks exactly the same on the Pico Neo 3 Link. Here looks exactly the same on the Pico Neo 3 Link. And this headset here looks exactly the same on the Pico Neo 3 Link as it does on my headset with the Pico Neo 3 Pro. And I have to say that this part here, I'm gonna superimpose some footage uh, on, 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 on as I'm talking, but this, first of all, is, is quite big, it's quite large. Now, there are pros and cons to this. First of all, I can actually fit my glasses with no issues whatsoever. They fit with no problems. Um, I have to say that on the HP Reverb G2, uh, I can feel it when I'm putting the HP Reverb G2 because it's a little bit more narrow uh, the side compared to this. This is super large and there's no problem. Uh, I can tell you that if you have large glasses, you're not gonna have a problem with this headset whatsoever. Although do go to the optician, that would be my, you know, uh, bring your headset with you to the optician. That would be my recommendation to make sure, of course, that whatever pair of glasses you're looking to buy fit if your current pair of glasses don't fit, that is. And of course, there's no third party at the moment providing, um, you know, third party pr lens prescriptions to fit onto the headset directly at this moment in time. Unfortunately, I do hope that our partners, VR-Wave.store, do go to the store and check out all the, you know, uh, all the stuff. You get a 5% discount using the promo code VR Essentials, by the way. You know, they're not going to be doing them for the Pico at this moment in time, but let's hope that they do, because at the moment, there's no way to fit lens prescription adapters as you can do on the MetaQuest or the PCVR, uh, PSVR1 or the PSVR2 that will be coming, uh, or also on the HTC or the Pimax, or even the uh, the, DG, the DJI Tron <laughs> lens goggles, the, the, the VR goggles, the VR headset for it. Uh, it's not a VR headset, really. Um, but, you know, and, 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 but at, and, and the HP Reverb G2, at the moment, it doesn't exist for the Pico, unfortunately. Now, the con about this is that it's really, really large, and it doesn't fit snug. There is a gap here, like I can put my finger inside. There's definitely a gap here, so it means that when I put my headset on, it's not 100% comfortable for my head. I don't have a particularly small head. I don't have a particularly large head. I'm just saying that for Europeans, beware that it is quite comfy once you 
you, you, you use the knob here at the back and you, you know, you knob it in. Okay, it does get more comfy, you get more suction, but at the end of the day, you will still have this gap here with the finger. So if you're not wearing glasses, especially for those who don't wear glasses, and I, please don't wear contact lenses in VR, it's super, no, no, it's very bad to do that. It heats up the, the headset. Your, your, your contact lenses could heat up on your eye and damage your eye. So I totally do not advise you put contact lenses on in VR for sure, uh, especially if you're gonna be in VR for an hour or two hours uh, daily. Um, you know, so I'm just saying that be aware that it's not going to be snug on your face compared to the HP Reverb G2 or the Quest 1. It's not going to be snug on your face. You will have a little bit light leaking going inside and then also underneath on the nose, there's definitely a much wider gap. I would compare it basically to the Quest 2 or the Quest, uh, Quest 2, I never tried it. So Quest 1 definitely can compare it to that, but compared to the HP Reverb G2, on the HP Reverb G2, there's absolutely no light whatsoever that penetrates the headset. It is freaking amazing. For this, you'll definitely see some light underneath for sure. There's a gap there and there's a gap here. So you will see some light coming in from time to time, especially if your light is behind you, shining towards your headset, you will definitely see it. Or if you have a lot of light coming, for, for example, from the window and it comes from under the headset, inside of the headset, then again, you will see some light streaking in there and it's not gonna fit super, super snug compared to a gasket like the HP Reverb G2. As I just mentioned, I think, I think Pico, honestly, you should provide more options for this. Um, also, the other issue that I have with this gasket, so after two hours of use, if you're sweating a lot and you're doing a lot of VR fitness and all these kind of things, then it's gonna feel a little bit either sticky on your face or it's going to feel a little bit like it's um, not I wouldn't say burning, but I just say like, it's not, it, compared to a cotton material, it just doesn't feel as comfortable, let's say, after a specific amount of hours of use, especially two hours, you're gonna find that, you know, it's not, because it's not stuck, your headset might fall down a little bit as you go along. You might have to adjust your headset again from time to time. So that can break the immersion a little bit. And also, um, yeah, because if you're sweating in VR and you're doing VR fitness, this this is recommended, of course, for events. If you have families, you want to pass it on to someone else, then it's very easy, of course, to wash it, for sure. But if it's just for you, I'm saying that this kind of VR gasket, it's better to have the other one, you know, the cotton, the, the fabric one, and then you can go and wash it, basically. Uh, the other thing is, is that it doesn't mention there's no, uh, there's no magnet technology in this headset compared to other headsets to fit the actual gasket on it. So you have to do it old school, like the Oculus Quest 1, and you have to click it into place. And sometimes it doesn't click into place straight away. So it's very also fragile, very sensitive. If one of the plastic things break, you're done. You won't be able to put it in. So again, I'll superimpose some uh, images on top just to show you. So I'm just saying that that is also a bit of a concern in terms of the durability, the longevity of the gasket. At the moment, there isn't a way to change the gasket. You would have to write in if your headset is under warranty, of course, but you're not able to buy a separate gasket from a third party like you can on other headsets, for example, the HP Reverb G2 or the MetaQuest or the HTC or you know other headsets are a bit more popular. Then there are third party suppliers and accessory suppliers where you can buy those from. At the moment, it doesn't exist for the Pico, so do be aware of that. And it probably might cost them some money because they have to create, they have to, they have to recreate all the little bits that go in it. Now, the other thing is for this headset is you, for the adjustment of the IPD, the adjuster for the IPD is very simple. It's just like the MetaQuest, you have to go inside the headset and boom, this is the maximum. Then you have a medium and then you have uh, a narrow a narrow one. So every time that you bring it down, you will see some black stuff around just to let you know inside of the headset. It will reduce the field of view uh, inside of the actual headset itself. I personally have it on medium because when it's completely out, it looks a bit blurry for me. So I think medium is gonna be generally the actual setting for most people, I would say for sure. For me, it's, I mean, again, it doesn't matter, but I would much rather have it underneath, have a slider or a clicking slider underneath. I prefer the HP Reverb G2 way. 
Uh, because it's very, I mean, okay, it's fine. Once you set it and it's for you, it's done. But if you're doing an event with friends or you're doing an event for corporate use or, or, or you know, at your company and everyone have different IPD and then you have to adjust it every time because, you know, everybody have different eyesights and different vision things and uh, it, it will get a little bit complicated is my point. Now, let's talk about the battery life. The battery life is quite good. I have to admit um, that when you use the headset itself, uh, you know, without any form of, um, without any form of, you know, putting a USB adapter on it, like a charger or something, uh, a mobile charger, then no issues. This headset will last you a good two to three hours for sure. It'll take a good two hours to recharge it fully. Um, but you know, the battery, no issues. And also the batteries in the, in the controllers are absolutely amazing. They last for, oh man, I haven't changed them in, in like a month. I've used the headset probably, I would say, for at least 120 hours, and I haven't changed the batteries inside of the actual controllers. So I have to say that for the controllers, the batteries are absolutely amazing, but inside of the VR headset itself is also amazing to a great degree. Now, the only thing that's going to, um, I would say, eat more battery life inside of your headset is when you're gonna be streaming it wirelessly to your PC. There is an option to choose from 72 hertz to 90 hertz. Uh, and also inside the headset, you can choose to put it at 120 hertz. By the way, it is no longer a 90 hertz. Uh, however, it's not 120 hertz. Streaming to the PC is only 120 hertz uh, la uh, latency frames per second, sorry, inside of the actual headset itself, not on the PC when you're streaming it to the PC, okay? To the PC is limited to 90 hertz at this moment in time. However, if you put it to 90 hertz, there's also an option to put it on fast, normal or HD quality, depending on what quality you want when you're streaming to the actual PC. And this is what's going to basically cost you um, battery life. The, 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 the better the quality, the faster the frames per second, it's gonna cost you more battery life. And of course, what they're not telling you in the marketing is that it's gonna cost you in terms of latency because it needs to ping back to satellite up in space. And after that, basically the, the ping comes back to the headset from your computer to render all the images of the game inside. Now, personally speaking, when I do wirelessly, what they don't tell you in the marketing is you need to be next to your actual router because otherwise you are going to have some issues you will have some latency if you're away in another room especially if you close the door it's going to create some issues so just be aware of that with the dp4k cable however it's really not bad really really not bad i have to admit it's pretty pretty good um but at the end of the day it's not as clear as the, of course, the HP Reverb G2. Why? Because the resolution inside of this headset is not 4K compared to the HP Reverb G2. It's basically HD inside of this headset. It is not 4K like it is in the HP Reverb G2. So the quality with the 4K DP cable, however, if you've never tried the HP Reverb G2, you're gonna love it. You are going to love it. The graphics inside, as you can see from the footage, I did some gaming with uh, Shooty Skies. Uh, you know, it was really awesome. You can tell here by the footage inside. Now, it's a little bit hard for me, of course, to always position the lens uh, properly. I mean, the camera lens properly on the actual lens of the headset. And also, by the way, I'm using an iPhone 7, which is a very old iPhone. There is, of course, no flicker whatsoever inside of the Pico. The flicker that you can see on the footage is due to the frequency at which the camera is picking up the light, and then it creates all this flicker inside of the recording. But of course, inside of the headset itself, there is no flicker whatsoever. And then we also tried other games, for example, uh, Google Earth. Now, the issue with the Pico because it's not, um, uh, sorry, before I move on to this, as you can see with Google Earth, it's also very good. There's no issues there. The graphics are very good. There's no issues whatsoever. You're gonna have an amazing time. But the moment, the moment you put an HP Reverb G2 on your face, Ooh, this is when you're gonna to start to notice the difference, of course. And when you stream wirelessly, that is, there's definitely some, some giveaway there. It's definitely not, it's, it's, it's still pretty good, don't get me wrong. It is actually, compared to two years ago, it is pretty amazing. But definitely not PC VR quality. 
Um, but it is not bad, not bad at all, not bad at all, but there are definitely some differences there. But if you're not, if you're new to VR, you're not a PC VR hardcore fan, then you definitely will not notice those differences whatsoever. And the moment that one day you get yourself a PC and have proper PC VR, then you go, wow, blimey, I wish I had PC VR <laughs> first a long time ago. But if you don't have, you know, the funds to buy a good PC, or maybe it's not something that's for you, then obviously, of course, Course, then you're not going to notice the differences. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Now, what they're not telling you on the marketing, however, is that because the Pico is fairly new, there are some PC VR titles that are not compatible both with the wireless version and also with the DP4K version as well when you put the cable from the Pico to your actual PC. This includes, for example, well, Pilot. The, the new game by Sokus, the pilot game, you know, the, uh, the uh, sorry, sorry guys, uh, let me just get the game properly. It just escaped my mind, of course. Um, the game, which is this one here, Omega Pilot. And thank you, Sokus, so much for providing us the key to this. I definitely will be doing a review with the HP Reverb G2 tomorrow. But basically, the Sokus uh, app, let me just transition over just to show you what it is. Uh, this one here, the Omega Pilot app, does not work with the Pico Neo 3 Pro um, and the, the Pico Neo 3 Link, probably also with the DP4K cable and also the actual wireless streaming. So unless it's inside the headset, it will not work. There are other titles that don't work also. I will do a separate video, so do make sure to hit the notification bell. After subscribe, after do all my testing, I will upload those uh, games that don't work. Now, Half-Life Alex works, um, and also Population One works. Um, most games that I've tested so far work, but I'm just saying that there are some titles that don't work. So do be aware of that because the developers have to install and adapt their SDK inside of the Pico to make it compatible when using PC VR on Steam VR and also Steam VR for wireless streaming. And of course, the actual SDK to make it work inside of the headset without any cables whatsoever. So you can just boom, put it on and play wherever you want at your heart's desire. Now, the other thing that the uh, marketing is not telling you about, if we just transition over again back to the website, uh, as you can see on the pictures for the DP4K here, as you can see, now, the other thing they don't tell you is that this thing here, you actually need a screwdriver, which they provide you in the box, um, you know, to actually put it on. Now, that is a little bit... <laughs> It's a little bit funny that you have to do that now. Now, of course, it's good because at least it keeps it firm. Uh, you know, it won't go anywhere. But I think, I think a magnetic, a magnetic safety uh, thing to put on would be much better in case. I mean, what if you get entangled? What if you you go? Out, what if you fall? What if there's something that occurs? This could potentially be very dangerous. I think it's definitely better to have a magnetic version, if possible, and the technology, of course, exists and it's possible to do it to do that, to adapt a magnetic safety uh, USB 3 cable as opposed to something that you have to actually physically use a screwdriver with to put it inside of the headset because on the other end, by the way, there is no magnetic pin either. You have to put it slowly into the actual computer. So this could be actually quite dangerous, just FYI. So that is one of the things. The other thing they don't tell you and they don't show it here on the picture is that on the side of the headset here, let me just show you very quickly. Uh, which is basically this thing here. This thing here where you actually put the cable on it and I will superimpose uh, an image as I keep talking about this. It's, like it's extremely hard to put this thing on the actual headset. Perhaps it's very possible they're not gonna supply it or it's possible that they will supply a new one. I don't know, but when they supplied it to me about four or five months ago, it is just really, really hard to put this thing on the headset, it basically almost broke my strap or the actual thing almost broke itself. It was just a really pain in the butt to put this thing on here. But of course, once it's on, it's on. But I'm just saying, if you feel that it's not gonna go on the headset and you buy the cable, which by the way is extra, um, just be aware that you might need to find another alternative, some tape or some rubber bands or some uh, uh, metal wiring or just another or a clip or something of some kind to, to, to put your, your cable on here because at the end of the day, um, this is not user friendly whatsoever. Uh, the other thing that I could talk to you about is that for adjusting the strap, well, there is the back as we talked about earlier, but there's also here at the front, it's not friendly for small, 
This headset is not very friendly for small heads, I would say, uh, especially like for kids. Uh, women also who are Asian nature or have smaller heads of nature, it will definitely, I would advise if you're a woman, to create your hair in a bun at the back and have your hand in your, your hair in a bun at the back and then put the headset over your bun because otherwise, or use a cap, put a cap on, a hat on like, like I do here and then put the headset on because if you have a small head, it is not gonna be for you. It's definitely not for kids. Uh, it will definitely fall. It's not heavy. It's not a heavy headset, I have to admit, it is not a heavy headset whatsoever. Although after one hour of use, you will feel the weight for sure. But at the end of the day, if you have a small head, wear a hat. If you're a woman, put, a, put your hair in a bun and then put the strap on. It will be most advisable to do that. This is not what they tell you in the marketing, of course. So this is additional stuff just for you. So I hope this is very helpful for you. And then finally, I guess the only other thing I can talk to you about is that, um, well, what else do you want to know? Leave a comment below, let me know. I'll do a follow-up video next time and then talk to you about the other stuff. I guess I guess I can talk to you about the audio. The audio is not bad whatsoever. Uh, however, it's not extremely amazing surround sound. Uh, let me just do a very, very quick test and put the footage on top so you can hear in three, two, one. Yes. So there you go, you could hear it. Um, so, I mean, the, the, it's fine, it's not too bad, but I now the good thing about this headset, it does come with a uh, headphone jack, so you can put your own headphones. Oh, one thing they don't tell you in the marketing is this, is that if you're gonna use the microphone, two things about the microphone. First of all, the microphone picks up everything, everything in your house, everything in the street. It will pick up literally like I'm, eight, I'm about 15 blocks high in the sky and it picks up the road sign if my window is open, it will pick up the sound from there. And the other thing is if you're streaming wirelessly, there is an issue at the moment where when you talk to people, you will hear your echo back at you. You'll hear an echo and you'll hear yourself talking back to yourself, which is freaking irritating. So I would highly suggest at the moment, if you have this issue, get yourself a pair of these kind of headphones, then go to Anne Leon, get yourself a microphone like this. Thank you very much, Anne Leon. We don't get any money from them, but they sponsor us a microphone. Just get an Ant Leon microphone or something like this. Put the mic on your head, on, or you could put it here if you wanted to, uh, you know, with your earbuds. And then use a third party microphone. Otherwise, don't use the microphone from in the headset. It, at the moment, they need to work on it. Perhaps by the time this video comes out, uh, they would have fixed it, or by the time you see this video, uh, they would have fixed it. But I'm just saying that by today's standards, publishing today's video, me testing today. There's a big issue with the microphone at this moment in time. So just be aware it picks everything up, first of all, which I personally do not like. And secondly, uh, if you use the, the, the wireless streaming, there will be some issues, some echo coming back when you're talking to people uh, as you're streaming to your Steam VR games, to the PC. So just be very, very aware of that. All right, guys, so leave your comments below. Let me know your questions, whatever other things you want to find out from this headset uh, in the future. As I mentioned, it is 120 hertz inside of the headset. Um, I guess the only thing I can talk to you about is I like the fact that when you've left your play space, it will tell you, it will give you a warning, uh, an audio warning. And also if you put your headset back on and you look, uh, behind, it will show you where your play space is in a really awesome holographic way, I have to say. That's pretty amazing. All right, guys, I will see you in another video very soon. We'll do some comment shout outs and also welcome to subscribers in another video because today it's a little bit long. But I would like to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to this channel. We're almost at 11,000 subscribers, guys. Go to the link description below after the end of this video to enter to win a brand new HP Reverb G2 as well as a brand new pair of Cyber shoes, the gaming station and the carpet and the chair and everything that goes with it. And also a voucher worth 50 US dollars. We can redeem against any VR title in your Oculus MetaQuest store, Vifold or Steam VR store. Guys, it's been amazing spending some time with you. I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye guys.